Hey guys, what's up? This is Vishy here. I'm going to be telling you about consanguineous marriage in this video. You all would have known Tutankhamun. He was one of the most popular pharaohs who became the king when he was nine years old and he died at the age of 19 after ruling for 10 years. Contrary to the popular belief that kings are very strong, he was tall, but he was physically frail with a crippling bone disease in his club left foot. He is the only pharaoh to have been depicted in a seated position while engaging in activities such as archery, traditional inbreeding, which means marrying inside the family has contributed to his weak stretcher and his early death. DNA tests performed in 2010 revealed that Tutankhamun's parents were brother and sister and he married his half-sister too. Marriage between two family members who are second cousins or closer is known as consanguineous marriage. It can impact the health of a child born to such couple by causing genetic diseases. If you liked the video till now, do subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. Consanguineous marriages have been practiced since the ancient times. Even today, 20% of the world's population live in a place where consanguinity is preferred. The rates of consanguinity vary drastically with different religions, race, cultures and the geographical location. There is an important cluster of countries associated with high levels of consanguinity. Observed in most communities of North Africa, the Middle East and Western Asia a transverse belt that runs from Pakistan and Afghanistan in the east to Morocco in the west and also in south of India. Noticeably, many Arab countries display some of the highest rates of consanguineous marriages. Consanguineous marriages are more prevalent in rural than urban areas. This has been positively associated with low age at marriage, low educational level of the mother and low occupational status of the husband. Parental consanguinity increases the autosomal recessive conditions, especially by increasing the expression of the autosomal recessive deleterious alleles, which is high in the case of the first generation cousins. Parental consanguinity has been associated with high rates of pediatric conditions such as stillbirths and perinatal mortality, congenital birth defects, malformations and mental retardation. Blood diseases such as hemophilia and alpha thalassemia, cystic fibrosis, chronic renal failure and neonatal diabetes mellitus. In a condition such as cystic fibrosis, the chance of the offspring having it varies with the degree of consanguinity. When the first cousins marry, the rate is 12.5%. And when the second cousins marry, the rate is 3.13%. And when the third cousins marry, it is just 0.78%. And when the fourth cousins marry, it is just a mere 0.2%. Consanguinity is a deeply rooted social trend with 1 billion people currently living in countries where consanguineous marriages are customary. And among them, one in every three marriages is between cousins. The rising public awareness on possible preventive measures for congenital disorders has led to an augmentation in the number of couples seeking preconception and premarital counseling on consanguinity. In certain societies, such as those of the ancient Egypt, brother, sister, father, daughter, mother, son, cousin, cousin, aunt, nephew, uncle, niece, and other combinations of relations within a royal family were married as a means of perpetuating the royal lineage. Consanguineous marriages can also lead to a condition known as inbreeding depression. With the example of a horse, let me explain to you what is inbreeding depression. Consider A to be a dominant trait. And small a to be a recessive deleterious trait. A dominant trait can be considered as the horse height and speed. A horse that is tall, muscular and 
runs fast. And a recessive deleterious trait can be considered to be a weak, fragile, slow horse. So there is a horse that has a capital A and a small a. The small a trait is expressed only when both the alleles are of small a. So this horse mates with a horse that has both the alleles to be capital A. The first horse born out of the mating of these two has a capital A and a capital A. The second horse has a capital A and a small a. The third horse has a capital A and a small a. And the fourth horse has a capital A and a capital A. So this is where inbreeding takes place. These two horses mate. Now, a horse has capital A and capital A and another horse has small a and small a. This horse is weak, fragile and slow, which shows that inbreeding can bring out the recessive deleterious trait. Consider this horse outbreeds with another horse that has a capital A and a capital A. The result of this combination is a horse with a capital A and a small a, which is normal. The normal horses here are all except this one. This one has a small a and a small a. This horse born out of inbreeding is weak, fragile and slow, which is not considered to be a positive trait for a horse. Whereas when outbreeding is done, the recessive trait doesn't come out that easily. This is a normal horse. That's it guys. If you like the video, do subscribe to Nick Sapien. And I would like to thank Manigandan for suggesting this topic to me. This is Vishy signing off.